This week we'll start with the final chapter of Luke's Gospel, which contains one of my favorite passages. Jesus is walking along a road to Emmaus with two of his followers after he's been resurrected, but they don't realize that it's him. And he speaks with them about how all of the Old Testament has been leading up to the Messiah's arrival. And he shows them how all that Moses wrote and all the prophets point to him. And then their eyes are opened and they realize it's him and he disappears from their sight. And they turn and say to one another, did not our hearts burn as he talked with us on the road and while he opened the scriptures to us? And then as we finish Luke, we're going to move on to the next book of the New Testament that was written by Luke, which is the book of Acts. Acts is a unique book in the New Testament. Its purpose is to give us a selective history of the beginning of the church following Jesus' resurrection. In Acts chapter 2, we get an important hinge point in the narrative of Scripture in the coming of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. It's a spectacular scene full of fulfillment of what God has been promising since the Garden of Eden. He's given them the tabernacle and then later the temple as a way to be with them. And now he's going to dwell within them rather than simply dwelling in the temple. And in these first few chapters of Acts, we see a very changed Peter, the Peter who fell asleep in the Garden of Gethsemane when Jesus asked him to pray. And the Peter that denied knowing Jesus while Jesus was on trial, he has disappeared. Now we have a bold Peter who has seen the risen Lord and has received the Holy Spirit. He preaches to a crowd of thousands and thousands hear and believe that Jesus is the Messiah. And then in Acts chapter 6, we encounter a new leader of this new church, Stephen, who immediately draws anger from the Jewish leaders, and they set their, their minds to arresting him. 